Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you all doing? Hello, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are here. We're going to start the worship today. So, let us prepare our hearts, our mind, our soul to the God Almighty. Let us welcome Him here to touch our hearts and mind. Okay. <laughs> we would like to invite you all to stand and enjoy the next worship.
God every hour in our life, right? We all need God. I need
say to him, whatever you want, do whatever you want to. And that's how we're coming into his presence. Today. Do whatever you want to. And we're going to read a lot of scripture today because your discussion around the table is going to be about the scriptures. And we're going to ask you two questions as we wrap up this entire series of Matthew today. We're going to ask you two questions. What is the kingdom of God not? And what is the kingdom of God and our part in it? Okay? Those are the two questions for today. So listen closely. We're going to have Uteti and Reuben come and read the Old and New Testament. Good morning all. For today's Old Testament reading will be taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 1. Solomon was the son of David. Solomon made his position secure over his kingdom. The Lord his God was with him, 
he made Solomon very great. Solomon spoke to the whole community of Israel. He spoke to the commanders of thousands of men and commanders of hundreds. He spoke to the judges and all the leaders in Israel. He spoke to the leaders of Israel's families. Solomon and the whole community went to the high place at Gibeon. That's because God's tent of meeting was there. The Lord's servant Moses had made the tent in the desert. David had carried up the ark of God from Kiriath Jerim. He had brought it to the place he had been prepared for. It. He had set up a tent for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar that Bezalel had made was in Gibeon. Bezalel was the son of Uri. Uri was the son of Hur. The altar was in front of the Lord's holy tent. So Solomon and the whole community asked the Lord for advice in Gibeon. Solomon went up to the bronze altar in front of the Lord at the tent of meeting. Solomon sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings on the altar. That night, God appeared to Solomon. He said to him, Ask for anything you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, You were very kind to my father David. Now you have made me king in his place. Lord God, let the promise you gave to my father David come true. You have made me king. My people are as many as the dust of the earth. They can't be counted. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Then I'll be able to lead these people. Without your help, who would be able to rule this great nation of yours? God said to Solomon, I am glad that those are the things you really want. You have not asked for wealth, possessions, or honor. You have not even asked to have your enemies killed. You have not asked to live for a long time. Instead, you have asked for wisdom and knowledge. You want to be able to rule my people wisely. I have made you king over them, so wisdom and knowledge will be given to you. I will also give you wealth, possessions, and honor. You will have more than any king before you ever had, and no king after you will have as much. New Testament reading from Matthew 28. The Sabbath day was now over. I read it again. New, Test New Testament reading from Matthew 28. The Sabbath day was now over. It was dawn on the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a powerful earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven. The angel went to the tomb. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. His body shone like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. <coughs> the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the, the women, Don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. Come and see the place where he was lying. Go, quickly. Tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb. They were afraid, but they were filled with joy. They ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my, bro my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city. They reported to the chief priest all that had happened. When the chief priest met with the elders, they came up with a plan. They
they gave the soldiers a large amount of money. They told the soldiers, we want you to say his disciples came during the night. They stole his body while we were sleeping. We were sleeping. If the governor hears the, this report, we will pay him off. That we that will keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were told. The story has spread all around among the Jews to this day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some still had their doubts. Then Jesus came to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. This is the word of God. So in today, as we've already said, we're going to wrap up our study of the unpredictable kingdom of God. And thank you uh, for those readings. Welcome to IES Pondo, whether you're online or in person. And we are Waldemar and Rosemary Kowalski. We're pastors, part of the ministry team here at IES Pondo. And if you've missed some parts of the story in the book of Matthew and want to review those, we have a YouTube channel. All you have to do is search for IES Vandome, just no space between, and you'll find us. You'll also find us on Facebook and so on. So that's where we are. Yeah, so today is our final Sunday in Matthew, and it's also Round Table Sunday, as you can see. So you're going to have a chance to discuss a couple of questions at your table especially about your part in this unpredictable kingdom of God. We're going to ask, what is this kingdom? What is it not? How do you become part of it? And what reward is there in serving the king? Okay, so if this is your first time at a roundtable Sunday, what you're going to do is, when we ask the question, when it's up on the screen, uh, you'll choose one person at your table who's the recorder for the first question. You'll write down your answer to that question, and um, we would encourage you to try to, to just uh, choose one thing, because otherwise, the first table gets to answer <laughs> all the questions, and everybody else is sitting there, hey, they just took my answer. <laughs> That's not fair. So try to answer, give one good answer, and then each table can, can go on. And then for the second question, you'll choose somebody else, okay, who will relay that question to the whole group. So. All right, so the first round, you're going to have five minutes to discuss, so be focused. I know some of you are here for the first time, you want to tell everybody about your wonderful travels and all that. Be focused. After we're done, we're going to let you sit around the tables and visit. All right, so you have five minutes discussion, and we might need a little more for the second round. So let's get started. So the verse that's our summary and our text this morning is from Matthew, and it's in chapter 6. This is the verse. It will be up on the screen in a moment. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Matthew is all about the unpredictable kingdom. Now in our Old Testament reading, King David has died and handed the kingdom of Israel over to his son Solomon. And God asks Solomon, what do you want from me? Imagine if tonight God came to you and said, 
Joshua, what do you want from me? Or Kevin, what do you want from me? All right. Or Laura, what do you want from me? Or Rosemary, what do you want from me? What would you answer God? Imagine. If he asked you that question, what do you want from me? Well, we heard it in the reading. Solomon asks God to guide and direct him. He, he asks God to make God's kingdom and the, the people that Solomon is king over a blessing to the people and so on. And God says, yeah, that's a really good request. I'm going to do that. So what is the kingdom of God? <laughs> Paul was one of the early, it's a, we would call him a first generation follower of Jesus. One of the things he says that it's not about eating and drinking. Now, we really do enjoy eating and drinking. One of the mottos of IES, and we're part of the IES churches, so we inherited this model, motto is faith, Food, fun, and fellowship. Okay, so... Food is in there. Food is in there. That's one of the reasons why we try to have, you know, the community table and so on, because a lot of what Jesus does happens around the table. It's not just about eating and drinking. It's not just sitting at a banquet table in the king's presence. It's about using the king's power, living on the king's behalf to serve and be an influence in the world. It's completely different from the kingdoms of this world. So listen to this. This is in Romans 14. God's kingdom is not, remember our first question is going to be, what is it not? The kingdom is not about eating or drinking. It's about doing what's right and having peace and joy. All this comes through the Holy Spirit. Those who serve Christ in this way are pleasing to God. They are pleasing to people, too. So, the kingdom of God is not, first of all, a matter of satisfying your own appetites. It's also not about just keeping rules. There, there are lots of approaches out there that are really good at rules. Making rules and trying to make you keep them. <laughs> Usually when that happens, people aren't quite as good as keeping the rules themselves. Jesus says to the Pharisees, you put burdens on the people you can't even keep. So it's not about you know public show being a good person, it's about being transformed, becoming godly, about being in relationship with God. Listen to what Jesus warns his followers, his disciples about. Here is what I tell you. You must be more godly than the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. How are you going to do that? If you are not, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of God. So how can you be more godly than the Pharisees? So it's not just about being a good rule keeper or having a good appearance. What else is it not? Well, the citizens of the kingdom of God, they're not timid. They're not powerless. They're not unloving. They are not self-centered, and they are certainly not ashamed of God and his kingdom. And, you know what, the kingdom of God is not always an easy life. So here's something that Paul says to a young man he is preparing in ministry, okay? Okay. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. I don't know. It, it works in English. It doesn't work in Greek. Timothy is his name. Sounds kind of like timid, right? Uh, it doesn't work that way in Greek. But it, it does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, 
but because of his own purpose and grace. If you look at that verse, we're going to talk about this one somewhat in the question that we're approaching. What is the kingdom of God not? Can we go back one screen? There, uh, next back. screen, back, back one. There we go. Okay, here. We're not timid. We are not powerless. We are not without love. And we're not self-centered. We're not ashamed of the kingdom. Okay, there's some knots. This is our first question. We want you to talk in the next five minutes. What is the kingdom not? So how is the kingdom that Jesus brought and talked about different from the view of many religious people? That's your question. What is the kingdom of God not? Okay, talk about your table and choose one to give your answer. One answer, okay? Thank you. 
or us to achieve some higher state of living before. But uh, God guarantees us by his sacrifice and over the peace and joy. Okay, on our table, the kingdom that Jesus brought was all about peace, eternal peace, not earthly things that other religions call the, the earthly things that they, uh, they didn't get in the world. Okay. Okay. What's God, uh, the, king, the kingdom of God is not, from our discussions, it's not physically like, you know, we think about kingdom, place, it's not physically, so more ideologically, uh, and what, in the center is Jesus, not the religious people, right, from the questions, so we focus on the example of Jesus in our life. Uh, we, we came up with uh, religious people are always uh, seeking to make themselves good enough, which is an impossible task to be with God. And 
Jesus came and said, you can't make yourself human. Only through me. So. Okay. Good. Okay, we came up with uh, that the kingdom of God is in the spiritual realm, and it's not based on anything that man does in his works and deeds. It's an eternal gift that is deposited into us through Jesus and his sacrifice and through his word. The kingdom of God is not without suffering. It's not working alone or working by merit. It's not about religion. Okay. So something that came up was that it's not about fame or being famous, but it's about doing the right thing to glorify God, not for the money. It is concerning to the salvation of every human, salvation of sin, light, spirit, body, soul, and also not to be self-centered. Therefore, it's all about knowing God and doing what He wants. The yes. love of God is not complicated, not supposed to be. It's not about self-satisfaction, but we have to remember that the love of God is not just about us, but about God in us, working in us. Wow, you guys had some good answers. That was that was excellent. Okay. You know, one, one, one of the things Rosemary and I discovered when we first started doing roundtables, we need to talk less, we, because what we hear from you basically gives the talk. <laughs> you guys do a good job of it. You, you know, pat yourself on the back or clap for yourself or something. Yeah, good job. So, most of that was what the kingdom of God is not. And now we come to part two. But what is the kingdom of God and what is your part in this kingdom? So, if you wanted to know what the kingdom of God is like, you might want to have a look at God. And so as Jesus begins his ministry, he starts to travel and to teach, and he's got a very simple message. He says, the kingdom of God is here. Or the way you may read it in the Gospels, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. <clears throat> God is interested in you and wants to help you. So let's read. Jesus went all over Galilee. There... He taught in the synagogues. He preached the good news of God's kingdom. And, and we should have a slide for this. He healed every, kind, every illness and sickness the people had. News about him spread all over Syria. People brought to him all who were ill with different kinds of sicknesses. Some were suffering great pain. Others were controlled by demons. Some were shaking wildly. Others could not move at all. And Jesus healed all of them. Everywhere Jesus goes, he heals and helps people. Jesus hasn't changed. He wants to heal and help you too. And he does that in his kingdom through his spirit, his word, and his followers. And once again, let, let's just remind you that pastors Rick and Pia are available in the prayer room or up on the stage. Yeah, behind, the, behind there That's is our here. prayer room. You can go in from the outside or you can go in from here. And they'll be there after our gathering to pray with you, whatever your needs are. It's their delight to do that. But you don't have to wait for them. One of the cool things about being at the tables like this is you can ask someone at your table to pray with you. Because part of being about family is you care for each other. You don't just ignore the needs around you. You can ask another believer or a pastor during the week. Our part of the kingdom is to continue the work of Jesus. And how does that happen? Well, first... Life in the kingdom starts with repenting, turning away from our sins, and living a life under God's rule. Okay? 
which is is about rules. His rulership, okay, his, his kingship. Jesus said you had to live out your convictions. You couldn't just mouth some words and be done. I have heard people say, if you will repeat these words after me, you are instantly part of the kingdom of God. And after that, nothing. You know, some people go like, I'm a sinner. I want God to save me. Okay, are we done? No. Being part of the kingdom means turning away from the other kingdoms and living in the kingdom of God. And we say our ABCs every week. You, you've heard them so many times, but it's really important for you to hear them again. Because this is how you can become a part of the kingdom if you aren't yet. This is how you can remind yourself what life is like in the kingdom. And this is also how you can share with others how to become a part of the kingdom. So, A stands for admit. This is where we recognize we can't do it ourselves. Following rules, being good, doesn't work. Because ultimately, I'm not good. And we admit that it's not our kingdom. B? What do we believe? What's the most important thing we believe? Jesus died for my sins and he makes a difference. He's the king who paid our admission fee. The thing we could not do, work off all our debts against God, make ourselves righteous. We believe Jesus when he said, it's finished. We believe that. You know, it just really struck me as funny. When God warned Israel about the danger of choosing a king, he says, yeah, the king's going to want taxes from you. He's going to make you go to war. He's going to do all this stuff. Earthly kings are all about what they can get from you. What's our king about? What he has done for us. Very, very cool. Now, how do we respond to that? We have C, which stands for? Commit. Commit. We live differently. We change our lives. Rosemary's talked about that change. Repentance means to change your direction, to go a different way, to live a different way. So Jesus says to the self-righteous people, you know all the rules, but you don't obey God from the heart. It's a story we've heard in the book of Matthew, in Matthew's gospel. I'm going to just read it. We will read this together for you. What do you think about this, Jesus said? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, the son answered. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to his other son. He said the same thing. And the son answered, Oh, sure, Dad. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Jesus goes on, which of the two sons did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, what I'm about to tell you is true. Tax collectors and prostitutes will enter the kingdom of God ahead of you. Wow. John came to show you the right way to live, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes did. You saw this, but even then you did not turn away from your sins and believe him. That's in Matthew 21, if you want to look it up. So you have to repent and commit to God's ways. That's how you become part of the unpredictable kingdom of God. Okay, so the first thing is repentance. You turn, you start your life with Jesus. The second thing is the kingdom. Life is all about staying connected to the king and valuing what the king values. 
near the beginning of their time together, Jesus teaches, oh, he does a lot of teaching. But there's one really famous teaching where he sits down with them on a mountain, which is why it's called the Sermon on the Mount. And he tells them how different the kingdom of God is. You may remember the Beatitudes, which just have a very different approach to life. Like, blessed are the poor. What? It's a blessing to be poor? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they will be satisfied. It really is different. Jesus also in the same sermon tells them, don't seek revenge. If you have lustful, unrighteous, or disrespectful thoughts, it's just as sinful as if you do those actions. So what's happening inside you, remember one of these groups said it's not about a place. It's about the kingdom of God inside of us, so what happens inside matters. Jesus says, do more than is asked of you. If somebody says, look, you're my slave for the next mile, go for two miles. Add a blessing to them. You know, something I just want to say really quickly. Being tempted, having an improper thought come to you, whatever it is, whether it's anger at that really bad driver, or, you know, whatever the problem is, being tempted is not the sin but letting it grow inside you, even if you don't act, even if you don't kill that driver, you're still, there, there's something that's between you and others and you and God. So, so don't, don't get tripped up thinking that having a thought come to you is the sin. It's the sin when you start to dwell on it, when you make a room at the table for it. My grandma used to say, die Vögel können fliegen, Sie dürfen kein Nest bauen. You know that? You got enough of those words? The birds are going to fly over your head. Just don't let them build a nest on you. And that's the way it is. Temptations fly by. Don't let them build a nest. It, you, the, the only way not to be tempted is to be dead. <laughs> you know. So, life in the kingdom means obedience to the king. It's the third thing as we're going along. That results in a fruitful life. Jesus says a number of times, listen, if you love me, you'll obey me and my Father will love you. And it's it's not like obey me or I'm going to smack you or whatever. It's just, look, if I love Rosemary, one of the things that makes me happy is to be able to please her. When, when she That's a lifelong task, right? <laughs> And it's a worthwhile task. I want to tell you, you know, she likes peppermint tea at night. And so I feel cheated if I don't have a chance to get her her peppermint tea. She's already made it herself. Why? Because I love her. Do I have to do what I do as a servant of God? No. I have the privilege of loving God and living for him. And Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey me. My Father will love you. If you want to serve me, stay connected to me. Like a branch of grapes stays in the grapevine. How much work does that branch of grapes have to do to bear fruit? It just stays connected. If you are attached to the grapevine, life will flow from Jesus to you and through you to others. So, we repent, we turn the other way, we absorb the kingdom values, and stay connected to God through our obedience. And finally, life in the kingdom is about sharing this good news with others. Jesus explained the kingdom of God to his disciples after his resurrection. In fact, in Acts 1 verse 3, I think we have a slide for that. It says, after suffering and death, Jesus appeared to them. In many ways, he proved he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. So that would be till about November. It's a long time. During that time, he spoke about... 
God's kingdom. He's explaining, and he's modeling for them. I'm sharing the good news and explaining it for you. So you're going to go and explain it to everyone else. And he reminds his followers who he is, that he himself is under the king's authority. But you know what? <laughs> Listen to what he says. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Not some, not a bit. All. He is strong. He is powerful. He is the son of the most high king. In fact, in the last book of our scripture of the Bible, there are a number of times where it says that all of the world will ultimately know him as king of kings and lord of lords. And because he has all power, he tells his followers that his work is now their work. The work of Jesus is now your work. <clears throat> That's what you do today. If you follow Jesus, you are part of his mission, and that changes the whole world around you. So Jesus says this, so you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you, and you can be sure that I'm with you always to the very end. That's the ending of the book of Matthew. Now comes your discussion. Lots of scriptures this morning, so we hope that you're paying good attention. Here's the question. What is the kingdom of God, and how are you and I part of the king's mission on earth? Thank <laughs> you. 
Kingdom of God is an unending kingdom and it's a matter of power. How are we part of uh, the King's mission is to abide in Him, to pray, praise and worship and spreading the good news. Uh, in our group, what is King of God about Jesus and the universe connected to the King and and value what he valued and now what if, uh, are we part of the king's commission of God like to share the word of God by living it King of God is joy and peace in King God admit, believe and commit in God and eternal life how are we part of the king's mission serving and loving God serving and loving our neighbors Trust and obey. So, in my opinion, what is the kingdom of God? It's like a community that there's inside of the community is children of God that believe in God's word or promises. And how are we part of the king's mission on earth? It is be faithful and trust God and more the God uh, and share the God news also and just follow what God says because we are children of God because God is our father so we must do do what he said we should obey God our, our answer is uh loving God, sharing the good news of Jesus, love to others, and uh, love to people. That's short and sweet. Okay. Okay. After what we discussed, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God for us is life. The place that you can find peace and joy, where there is no pain, no sorrow, and no tears. And our part in Kingdom of God are sharing the good news for people, 
Be blessed in your life. Please enjoy. But for our uh, personal <coughs> self control, like managing our 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 heart, always uh, be in peace, always joy, always happy. Because it is not easy to to control our anger, to to solve our our sadness, to 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 solve our uncomfortable or it says direction like that. So keep always in peace. Participate in the kingdom of God by spreading the word, loving our neighbors. <laughs> so the kingdom of God is about love and he is everybody regardless about our background or our past life or our status and our part is to make a disciple and be a good example for them and spread love through our actions so people will see how God's works in our life okay uh, for us the kingdom of God is eternal life and the part our part in it is um, we call it I call it we became like Jesus pond you know, that's why for us, we say like, it's hard to be, when you like uh, being whole with God, it's hard for you to become rich because the more your part receive from God and then the more you're going to give from other people. Yeah, so in your answers, the kingdom of God is now, but it's also not yet. It's the power of God, but we work with the power that God mightily works through us. So it's this mysterious, unpredictable kingdom. Remember the verse we started with? It's this, seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added to you. In other words, if you're not seeking your own stuff, God will give you everything that you need. So think about what's important to you today. Is there something you are seeking that you are praying about asking God for? And you now realize it's not as important as what God wants to give me. And it's not just not thinking of your own interests. Whose interests do we seek in the kingdom of God? Whose interests? God's kingdom, the king's kingdom. You know, a kingdom where there's a king that nobody pays attention to, with all the couriers and all the nobles and all the peasants, everybody doing their own thing. Is that a strong kingdom? No. You seek the interests of the king. Okay, say that verse with us. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added to you. Yeah, that's Matthew 6, 33. Remember that Solomon asked God to do what only God could do. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. Give me the blessings of the kingdom of God. And in return, what did God give him? Wealth. Honor. Every, he, God provided an abundance on earth because Solomon asked for things that only God could give. Who has a king like ours? We invite you to join that unpredictable kingdom. Whether this is something that you are thinking of doing just for the first time or you're committing yourself to live under the king's rule. God, we thank you that you are the best of kings. That you love us. That you gave yourself for us. That you're not about what you get from us, but that you give so that we can experience true life. You came so that we could have life and have that in abundance. 
what a blessing it is to be your people. And I pray that each person here would experience that life in your kingdom today and in this coming week, in the next month, and through our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And Lord, if there's anybody who wants to make that decision to become part of your kingdom, here we are. We accept that we can't help ourselves. We believe that you have forgiven us as we come to you and we commit to living for you. And Lord, some of us are very bad kingdom people. We just are interested in ourselves and our own benefits. And we just lay those things right down at the foot of the cross of Jesus right now, the one who won the kingdom and the privilege of belonging. Just lay those things down and we say, God, we want to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And we know that you're going to provide for us in this week everything that we need. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the privileges we have is coming to the table. And one of the things I was thinking of as I was listening to a number of your answers. Psalm 23. God spreads a table for us in the face of, of our enemies. And we come to his rich table. And, and it doesn't matter if you're old or young. If you've made the commitment, if you're part of the kingdom of God, whether you did that today or you've done it a long time ago, you're welcome to sit at this table of Jesus. So we are going to celebrate communion together. This is something the church does. The people of God do this together. There are packets at each table. And Paul gives us these words, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. His body broke for us. We just can't even imagine how your body was broken. Thank you. Thank you for the breaking of your body on our behalf, for our healing, our mind, our body, our emotions, our will, our spirits. God, you were broken so that we could be whole. Thank you for that. Thank you that we get to celebrate that together. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. His blood shed for us. Jesus, your blood changed everything. Where we could not be good enough, you provided for us your goodness so that we could be in right relationship with your Father, with you, through the Holy Spirit working in us. Thank you. Thank you, God, for that shed blood and all we have in you. Amen. You know, part of our response, Jesus says, go share the good news. We were talking about why do we do good works as part of the kingdom? It's not at the beginning to earn God's favor. It's a response to his generosity. And we're going to do that act of generosity, giving our offering and our tithes, 
Now, so you can get those ready. Part of our service to the King and the Kingdom of God is supporting what God is doing. And Rika and Andre have sent us a video of what they're doing in Berlin. So enjoy this, and then we'll have our announcements afterwards. But, oh, no announcements. Oh, wonderful. Okay, let me announce this then. Waldemar and I are off for October. This is our annual fundraising, friend raising, partner raising, hugging our grandchildren, kissing our kids, if we can get them. Okay, that's what we're, so the next five weeks, the Lord is bringing to you five speakers. And they said, what should we talk about? I said, listen, what is God teaching you? And you bring that to IES Fundum. So next week, Roberto and Weena are going to be here. And Roberto's going to speak to you. The week after that, it's going to be totally creative. The creative director of IES Center, the big, like, 2,000-member church, he's going to be here. Oh, we're going to watch online because that's going to be really fun. Misha is going to be here the second week talking to you about being yourself in the kingdom of God. The third week, Joshua! All right, Joshua is going to speak to us about what God is teaching him. The fourth week is Tirza, who I think has spoken here before. Okay, and she's part of Center. She, she runs the media there. And then Pastor Anthony, who brought his team here, he's going to wrap it up the last week of October. So it's like God is spreading a feast for you this next month. Don't miss a single Sunday because God is going to do something special. And all tomorrow night, the other side of the world on Saturday night, we're going to be enjoying it with you, but online, all right? Okay, so let's see the video from Berlin. Okay. Over there. So we're gonna 
offer the Lord our funds as part of worship, but we want you to invest your energy, invest your words, invest your heart in the kingdom of God in this coming weekend. So, dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness to those who will listen. May the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Jesus Christ give hope to your dreaming. May the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your heart ablaze with a passion for God's peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So enjoy this.